So we are revising the entire company chapter 2013. Okay. So how many chapters are there in the company chapter 2013? 29. And how many sections are there? 470 sections. And there are seven schedules in the company sap. And um, the act applicable to all of India, it applies to companies incorporated under the companies act, either earlier law also, and it's like 1956 and um, 1913 earlier law also. Uh, the act is also applies to insurance company, banking company, electricity company, except which is inconsistent with the companies act. Then what is the company? Company means the company incorporated under the companies act or any other previous law. What are the features of the company? Company will be having a perpetual succession, separate legal entity, then uh, limited liability, common seal, artificial person. Then what is the difference between a company and a body corporate? What is a company? Company means a company incorporated in the company's act, but body corporate includes a company as well as any other uh, establishment which is registered under the act of parliament, but does not in, uh, include uh, corporate society. Then what is the separate legal entity concept? So members and the company is altogether separate, members are different, directors are different, companies is different. And this is uh, decided by the case law Solomon vs. Solomon, uh, that is a famous case law. Then lifting of corporate will be studied. In lifting of corporate will, what we studied? We, we disregarded this um, separate legal entity concept. <coughs> so in Daimler vs. Continental rubber tire case law, we studied that uh, separate legal entity concept. Daimler vs. Continental rubber tire, they lifted the corporate will in case, uh, because of the trading with enemy country, uh, that uh, Daimler is the uh, German company, that is Benz company, and the Continental Rubber is a British company, so they lifted the corporate will in case of uh, war. Then we studied Dinsha Manage Bedit. Dinsha Manage Bedit is for uh, tax evasion, we studied. They lifted the corporate will. Dinsha has started so many companies, you know. So he transferred his investment, those things. Then um, workman employed in the associated rubber case, what happened? The employee welfare legislation, like bonus, we studied, you know, minimum 20 members should be there for bonus, etc. So he started so many companies so that none of the companies are under the threshold limit. So he tried to avoid the tax, uh, means like employee legislation. Then um, Guildford Motor Company, we studied, uh, where uh, breach of contract, he shouldn't have started this um, another company. But he started another company, means like he shouldn't have started his uh, competition of business. But he has done that. So they made that is uh, not good. So they lifted the corporate will. Then uh, Gallagher case law, it's a fraud. So the directors and members are doing fraud in the name of the company. So they lifted the case, uh, this one. Then uh, Smithstone Knight, they lifted the uh, uh, corporate will in case because the holding and subsidiary relationship should be established. So that no, that uh, mayor will not abduct the uh, property. Then we studied the class of companies. Uh, depend upon the members, the class of companies are one person company, private limited company, public limited company. And depending upon the liability, the class of the companies are uh, private, uh, limited and uh, limited. Means like uh, uh, limited upon liability, limited and unlimited liability. Then uh, depend upon the shares and guarantee we other split. Then um, base of control we studied this overholding company and subsidiary company. Then uh, foreign company, government company, dormant company, small company, nidhi company, charitable company we studied. Then um, so we will be explaining everything. Company limited by shares. In company limited by shares, um, the shareholders' liability is limited to the extent of the unpaid amount of capital. And also that will be called either during the company's uh, tenure or in the time of winding up, they will be calling that. Then in company limited by guarantee, they will not the start they will not start the company with any amount of capital. And uh, in the time of uh, winding up, they will be calling you the amount of guarantee which you have uh, promised. Then similarity and dissimilarity. Dissimilarity is what um, only at the time of winding up in guarantee company they will be calling, but in the company limited by share they will be calling either at the time of winding up or before itself, okay, during the lifetime of the company also. And the shares can be transferred, but the guarantee cannot be transferred. Then um, unlimited liability company we studied. What is unlimited liability company? The liability will become totally unlimited. There is no any limited portion to the extent of which. So whatever uh, the company's liability, it will come, the shareholder has to uh, give that liability, that amount they have to pay. Then uh, one person company. Only one member company will be there, then so, so only one member, then uh, separate legal entity will be still there and uh, even one person company can, they can transfer the shares. Then minimum paid up capital, there is uh, no requirement of minimum paid up capital. No, rest uh, actually um, in private limited company, uh, now previously they were uh, that 1 lakh rupees of minimum paid up capital, now they have taken out that capital also. And uh, in private limited company, what are the restrictions? Uh, restrictions on transfer of shares, then minimum two members should be there, then maximum only 200 members. Joint holders will be considered as only one, and um, excluding that uh, temporary means employees, no, who got the shares while they are in employment, and employment ceased to exist, also they are continuing to hold shares. Then um, public cannot be invited for subscription of shares and securities and deposits. Okay, this is the restrictions on uh, private limited companies, but they have a privileges also. The company can have only two directors, that's enough, and no independent directors is required for a private limited company. The companies are exempted from audit committee, nomination, remuneration committee, stakeholder relationship committee.
then uh, we have the small shareholder I means like small company what is a small company small company is uh, other than a uh, public company which has a uh, paid up capital not exceeding uh, 50 lakhs and which has a turnover not exceeding 2 crores and the small company should not be a holding company or subsidiary company of any other company or it should not be a section 8 company and it should not be a special act company then public company we studied public company is not a private limited company public company is um, not holding that uh, four restrictions so there won't be any four restrictions and uh, but there should be minimum number of uh, members which is seven in private limited company it's only two public limited seven and they have directors of three minimum number of three directors and maximum 15 directors they'll be having and holding a subsidiary company what it is subsidiary company means a company which is controlled by the another company so the company which is controlling the board of directors of another company or controlling share holding of another company more than 50 percentage so it becomes a holding company and the controlled company becomes a subsidiary company and uh, either directly or indirectly that is true another subsidiary you are controlling also that will become a subsidiary for you uh, so subsidiary company if, if the holding company has shares but the shares is held in trust or share is held in uh, legal representative capacity that will not be considered as uh, holdings in the case of holding company so it's an exception and uh, private limited company which is a subsidiary of a public limited company will become a deemed public company okay then uh, Associate company. Associate company means a company which is having a significant influence on another company. So significant influence means 20 percentage of the capital of another company. So 20 percentage of what? Total share capital that is uh, EPT capital plus convertible preference capital. Then uh, listed company we have. In listed company, what is the listed company? So it should be listed in the uh, stock exchange. And we have a famous two stock exchange BSE and NSE and totally we have 19 stock exchanges in India. Then uh, foreign company. Foreign company is incorporated outside India having place of business in India and uh, we, we, they won't be registered in India, they have only place of business in India and this place of business can be any mode, either directly or indirectly, either through physically or through agent or electronically, everything is a foreign company. Then charitable object, what is charitable object, I mean it's like company, section 8 company we used to call them as, it's a company which is uh, incorporated to promote the uh, uh, commerce, science, arts, sports, education, research, social welfare, religion, so those things, yeah. Then uh, central government will issue license for it. <clears throat> then the company can have the wording private limited or public limited that is without without limited generally they will be having like uh, clubs um, federation foundation kind of thing for example reliance foundation kind of thing then uh, revocation of license can also be done by central government after giving opportunity of being heard then dormant company dormant company is a company which is incorporated for the doing some future objects not in the anything uh, current thing then um, to hold any assets or intellectual property then there is no significant transaction in the company, but uh, that means it's an inactive company. But what are the not considered significant transaction? Paying ROC fees, uh, then office maintenance charges, allotment of shares. These are not called as significant uh, means like a significant transaction. Then we studied Nidhi company. What is a Nidhi company? Nidhi company is uh, incorporated to promote a habit of savings, and only the mem uh, members can be uh, depositing the money, and they can only given loans and advances. And um, we studied the definition of financial institution also. Financial institution includes banks and uh, non-banking non financial institutions. Uh, and uh, we studied what is public financial institution. There are only three public financial institutions. That is LIC and uh, IDFC. That is Infrastructure Development Finance Corporation. Then uh, UTI, Unit Bank, uh, Unit Trust of India. Then conversion of public company into private company we studied. So public, uh, public company, if you want to convert into private company, they should have the uh, maximum number of members to 200. So they should first reduce the number of members. Then uh, they have to pass a resolution uh, to amend that, um, they have to put the restrictions, that four restrictions they have to put uh, regarding the maximum number of shareholders and um, restrictions on uh, public issue of uh, shares and securities and invading the public deposits. So these are the restrictions they have to introduce and um, <coughs> in NCLT's approval they should get. Before they will be calling us uh, CLB's approval, now they are, from June 2016 they have to get the NCLT's approval for converting the public company. No, the NCLT is National Company Law Tribunal. National Company Law Tribunal approval they should get. So, um, how to convert then uh, private to public? Private to public is very easy. You have to pass just personal resolution. No approval from NCLT is not required. And you should take out the four restrictions because the private company will have the four restrictions. Now, you should take out the four restrictions and file with the ROC within 15 days. Then, um, see, if you have more than 50 members in an association of uh, association of person, you should either convert yourself into a company. Otherwise, you will become illegal association, unless otherwise it's a HUF, that is Hindu Undivided Family, or AOP, that is uh, Association of Person, unless otherwise it will become an uh, illegal association. If it's become illegal association, it is uh, very difficult, no? Because uh, you cannot sue others and others cannot sue you. That is a big problem. 
and uh, mode of registration of one person company how to register one person company first member should maintain uh, mention his name and as a nominee name one nominee should be there and um, you should get the consent from the nominee also but the nominee should not be minor it should be only a major fellow then uh, <clears throat> we can also have a right to withdraw the consent the nominee has to give consent to act as a nominee he can also uh, withdraw the consent then the member can also change his nominee if you want but change of nominee does not amount to change of memorandum of association once it's registered memorandum is free so change of nominees doesn't amount to memorandum of association changes then uh, the person who starts the um, one person company should be a resident he should not be a non-resident that means he should stay in india for a period of more than only two days then uh, and minor cannot be a nominee that thing then uh, the latest fines also we studied and one person company cannot have the paid up capital of more than 50 lakhs and one person company cannot have a turnover of more than two crores so one person company, uh, it's not very favorable to all businessmen because turnover criteria, maximum only two crores you can have and a pride of capital criteria also given, 50 lakhs only maximum pride of capital. Otherwise, you should be convert, if you, if you are crossing, you should convert, means compulsorily convert into a private limited company. Then a procedure for incorporating a company, uh, you should first get the name approval done. Then after getting the name approval, then uh, MOA and AOA, you should sign by the subscribers. Then you should get uh, authorized by the CACS, uh, they should sign it. Then you should get the affidavit from the uh, shareholders and directors and all documents are true and correct etc. Then address and correspondence of the uh, means for, for example the register office is said to uh, register because no, the company doesn't have any incorporated certificate. So if you go to even um, place to put a rental agreement it won't work because the company itself not agree. So they will get a uh, address of correspondence. So just for 15 days they will get the address of correspondence. Then uh, according with, uh, with the identity proof of the shareholders, that is a subscriber's memorandum you should submit. And once the submitted ROC will check and give you a registration certificate which will have the what? Which will have SIN number, that is the company identification, corporate identification number will be given. Then uh, the certificate of evidence is the conclusive evidence. No one can challenge the certificate unless the is uh, obtained by forged documents. Then uh, we studied... Uh, <coughs> So CLB and tribunal can pass orders in case um, if they gave some forged documents and got the certificate of incorporation. Then we study the effect of incorporation. Once the certificate of incorporation is given, the company got its birth. And uh, now the company can buy the assets and liabilities in its own name. Then uh, legal relationship. So what is the legal relationship between the company and members, then company and outsiders, then outsiders and company, then uh, members and members we studied. So if a member of a company uh, pledges his share with uh, banks, it's the duty of the bank to tell the company that your member has pledged your, the share with me. Because no, otherwise the member can get the chance of getting a duplicate and sell it in the market. That's the pro uh, possibility is there. And um, in case the, the, that shares is partly paid up shares, in case the company calls money and the money is not being paid by the member who is having the partly paid up shares, uh, and the company will be forfeiting it. And without knowing that, that uh, creditor will be having the shares in this loan. So that is a big problem for the creditor. So it's, it's duty of the creditor to implement the company. And uh, between the company and members, we can have this, um, in case if the, you uh, bought back the shares from the members without even knowledge, his knowledge, so he can get back his uh, name back. Then uh, share certificate, he is a, he's having a right to get that. Within two months, you should submit the share certificate, no? So you'll be having the right to get the share certificate. Then uh, between the members, it, it, in the articles of association, told like that, um, you, if you if you want to go out of the company, you should uh, sell the shares to the members, existing members only. You should sell. So like that, it's 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 been mentioned in the articles of association. Then you should follow that articles of association. So, so it between the members and members, you have that. Then uh, now the commencement certificate has been withdrawn. Previously, they have something called commencement certificate. That is after incorporation, before commencement, there is something called commencement certificate. Now the certificate has been withdrawn, so you need not study anything. Then register office, once the company is incorporated, within 15 days you should get the register office done and you should file with the ROC. Um, then in the register office you should affix a board and uh, it should be in regional as well as the uh, English language. And all your letters, billets should contain the name, address of your company, etc. Then the SIM number is mean, that is corporate identity number should be uh, put in the letters. Then in case of name change, you know, in last two years you should tell this is my former name. This was the name uh, used to be called. Now this is my name. The company should tell for next two years. In, in case the company is limited by um, um, private limited, the company is a com private limited, they should introduce the word PVT limited. In case it's a normal, that is public limited company, they should end the word with limited. And in case of OPC, that is one person company, they should tell OPC limited. Then, 
what are the types of resolutions for uh, change of RO that is register office within the same city you should pass board resolution city to city within same jurisdiction within same state then you should get uh, specific resolution uh, city to city with different jurisdiction that means in Chennai and Coimbatore and uh, Pune and uh, uh, Bombay that is Mumbai and Pune you have two jurisdictions so if you are changing from uh, same state within state but with city to city then you should get uh, that within different jurisdiction now you get the RD approval that is regional director's approval also and state to state you should get the central government's approval then uh, we studied what are the clauses of memorandum also why to register memorandum only if the memorandum is registered no then uh, third party can read the memorandum of association because if it's without, without reading if he is participating in the company that means what it becomes the ultra wise transaction so it is i have no have validity on the third party as well as the company so it is the duty of the third party to read the memorandum of association then um, but in case if they are acting in good faith no then can be exempted so what is the ultra wise transaction ultra wise means the company is acting beyond the scope so no one can exercise uh, suit on another person and what are the contents of memorandum we have name clause situation clause object clause liability clause capital clause subscription clause we have six objects of uh, memorandum of association and in the name clause that we use the word uh, private limited public limited end then um, section 8 company means they will be ending the world electoral trust foundation forum association federation chamber of commerce chamber and the council etc they will be using situation clause we should state the state in which the situation is uh, mentioned and uh, nowadays they are also talking about uh, jurisdiction clause should be there that means uh, which jurisdiction you are coming okay like that then object clause with primary object of you with which you are incorporated so then liability clause if you are uh, limited liability you should tell your liability is limited to the what extent so you should tell the extent of whether it is share capital extent or uh, guarantee extent etc and in case if you are unlimited liability you should tell you unlimited liability then um, capital what is the maximum amount of capital is called authorized capital and the subscription clause is the person who is taking the shares no initially subscribers so two subscribers in the case of private limited company and uh, seven subscribers in the case of public limited company will be having then uh, while applying name uh, the name should not be identical name so that you should uh, take care and uh, if they have given any name which you are like already existing name they have given without notice and they will ask you to get back the name um, if you are given a wrong details and got the name they will get back the name so they will also told like this um, in case uh, compulsory if they want to change the name or you want to change the name voluntarily etc in case they are asking you to change the name compulsorily there are two options one is without the trademark and one is with the trademark and patent if they are compelling you because somebody has registered the patent uh, you should change the name within six months otherwise it should be changed within three months and for this order resolution is enough and for but if you are changing the name uh, voluntarily uh, then you have to pass special resolution if you want to change the name private limited to limited then just special resolution is enough if you want to change the entire name so pravalika should become a shivalika then uh, entire name change means uh, you have to get the central government approval also then moa format we studied uh, schedule 1 it's there how many schedules we have schedule there are seven schedules first schedule is the moa OA format second schedule is depreciation third schedule is financial statement fourth schedule is independent director fifth schedule is remuneration sixth schedule is uh, infrastructure company and seventh schedule is csr that is corporate social responsibility but for your ipc law you have only one schedule uh, which is uh, moa and aoa format and your ipcc accounts you have another two more schedule that is one is uh, schedule two is deposition schedule three is uh, schedule uh, three is uh, financial statement schedule so this is what you have in ipcc level then uh, then we studied uh, ultra wise transaction we studied on case law called as ashbury railway company versus richie uh, which actually is a laying of railway lines but ultimately end up in doing finance activity so this ultra wise transaction then we also studied uh, no one can sue others okay that is ganga mata refinery case loss in case of ultra wires transaction no one can sue others then um, we studied uh, register office also we how to change the register office then if you want to change the object loss what you should do you should uh, pass a special resolution to change the object loss in case of registered company you should also go to postal ballot that means what in meetings we studied what is postal ballot postal ballot means uh, you have to give an equal opportunity all who even cannot able to come to the uh, meeting and participate they should send the voting by post then in case of uh, object clause how to change you have to pass special resolution file it with ROC then liability clause you cannot touch the liability clause once registered it's always like that only a limited company cannot become unlimited unlimited cannot become limited then uh, you cannot increase the liability also for example 10 rupees shares it's 10 rupees only you cannot increase the 10 rupees shares to 12 rupees also 
then uh, we study the articles of association articles of association is the internal regulations of the company memorandum of association what is the charter of the company the scope of the company but articles of association is the uh, internal regulations of the company it says uh, what the director can do cannot do etc and if you want to increase the powers or decrease the power you can amend the articles of association by passing special resolution then uh, alteration of articles yeah special resolution you should uh, alter then within 15 days you should file it with roc then we study doctor of constructive notice what is a doctor of constructive notice if a third party when he is transacting with the company he is, he is bound to have a knowledge on the uh, memorandum and articles of association you should see the memorandum only after reading you should uh, participate in the company this is called uh, doctor of constructive notice that's uh, the safeguard for the company actually and what is doctrine of um, indoor management it's opposite doctrine to the doctrine of constructive notice which says what the third party will not be knowing your internal uh, things and all okay for example you passed a board resolution uh, saying that uh, three directors should sign uh, paper but it's signed by actually only two directors so because of this the third party will get affected so your internal management uh, um, things and all you will not be knowing that's what uh, he says i will read only this object whether you can do or not but uh, how you are doing and all i will not be saying i will be assuming that you are doing perfectly as per your articles of association and the uh, board of directors resolution so there is doctrine of indoor management but uh, this is decided in the case law uh, royal british bank versus turquan but there is an uh, exception to this case law also if you are a director you cannot tell you cannot get escape that doctrine of indoor management because you are a director you are deemed to have a knowledge on that then um, if you are negligent then uh, there is somebody cheated you that is uh, ruben versus great finger we studied no the company secretary has cheated the uh, third party so third party even though he paid the money to the company secretary he cannot claim a suit on the company because the company is nowhere connected with this so this and all we studied uh, as an exception to the doctrine of indoor management then conversion of a company which is already registered we also studied that so private limited can become a public limited public limited can become private limited so we can do that so for which you have to submit the moa aoa you should apply with the registrar and the registrar will give you a new certificate of incorporation and based on that uh, you will be converted then we studied what is the preliminary or pre incorporation contract what is preliminary pre incorporation contract the con contract is entered by the promoters before even the company is getting incorporated so that contract will become void because uh, no company even is existence so we study in the contract and also the person should be in existent to have a contract with him so what you should do you have to only cancel the old contract and enter the new contract that is called as novation we studied this case as uh, kelner versus baxter then uh, so who is a personal liable party the promoter will be the personal liable party in this transaction then we studied uh, provisional contract provisional contract is actually what after incorporation before uh, commencement but since the commencement certificate has been withdrawn the provisional contract has already been withdrawn then we studied who is a promoter promoter is the person who is uh, conceiving the idea of uh, incorporating a company so but experts who are assisting in promo uh, promoting a company will not be called as a uh, promoter because they are acting in a professional capacity and uh, can, how the promoter uh, can get remunerated the promoter can get remunerated in so many ways like for example allotting the shares for other than consideration for cash then uh, you can give a higher remuneration lump sum payment also you can give or uh, you can purchase the land from the promoter but in uh, all the things we should disclose the uh, profits in which he is having but without disclosing the profit he is cheating the company means the company has some rights like uh, they can get the property back and they can cancel the agreement which is entered by the promoters <coughs> then that, that is called rescind the uh, contract and uh, surrender the profit etc then service of documents in case the company wants to service any document to the uh, members or uh, to the roc or roc want to service any documents to the company they can use uh, register post speed post courier electronic mail fax hand delivery etc then uh, company servicing the notice <coughs> same modes like uh, roc to company company to roc everything same modes uh, then we studied what um, Uh, the document which is signed by uh, at least a kmp that is uh, key manager person or two directors or authorized person that becomes a valid document so with this we have completed the chapter 1 i took and actually 24